Normally, when I come to the door of a client's house, I'm attacked by a dog that's too scared, or I'm pounced on by a dog that's too excited. Did she hide in her crate? Oh, she's hiding under the bed. Spoiler alert, Addison doesn't fit the mold. So I just want to go on the record and say that I'm pretty sure today's lesson is going to baffle the positive reinforcement crowd, whose strategy for everything is to be annoyingly enthusiastic, which you'll soon see will only make Addison skittish. She's growling. Oh. Very sensitive. Come. Good. Good. Or to bribe her with high value treats. Now, I'm actually a huge fan of using food to reward dogs. The trouble with Addison in our previous lesson was that she's too scared to eat from my hand or her mom's. So today, I asked Janet not to feed her her breakfast and I brought her a really special treat. So stay tuned. Since Addison is obviously very scared of me, what I wanted to do was lead her in a way that would give her confidence. So watch how I can do that without using any treats, just being calm and soft and watch how this changes her mood completely. Come on, baby. Come on, good girl. That's a good girl. You got it. You got it. I wanna. Good girl. Very good girl. All right. So just in general, when when they are reacting, when anybody's reacting, you want to be as chill as possible in order to cut through it so you can influence them. Come on. Come on up. And it doesn't really matter where you leave them or what you do. I'm talking about the dog now. See, she's already giving off calming signals. She's already kind of shifted through being scared and she wants to run, okay? So I'm getting smarter with the leash. This is normal. This would be normal. Being able to sit down and somebody walking past, that's a normal thing when she realizes that that's all that's happening. And so in doing this, we're delivering a life experience. All right, you guys, thank you for sticking uh, with the lesson so far. I'm about to transition us onto the couch where I start teaching the client about how to be a peaceful alpha. And it's a little bit sensitive because this is always the spot where people don't see their blind spots and they don't see how they're creating the story, keeping the trauma going with the dog. And it's great when they can see it. I've got a lot of credit for Janet. She's got a lot of humility and she could see this and she accepted it. And it's great because Addison is able to move through anything that she's afraid of now so much more easily. But watch the lesson. I'm sure that we are all guilty of doing this stuff ourselves. All of the chit chatting that you're doing yes. is mimicking what an anxious mammal would be doing. It's not soothing her, it's modeling for her. If you start developing a story and personality character for your dog where they're always so scared and it blocks you from leading them to do stuff, then that's sort of a beta role that you're taking. Instead of just taking the peaceful alpha role, tuning in when your dog is scared and then giving them a command. Hey, come on. Hey, sit. Follow me leading them around in a yoga teacher style vibe in these moments which you saw me do soothes them and it gives them confidence and it earns trust with them so the more that you are seen as a leader that does this for your dog the faster they're going to heal nice you nailed that you nailed that you totally nailed that look and look at her confident. Tell her good job. Good job. Oh, well done, Janet. Um, we are all super proud of that quick transformation that you did and the result that you got. That was really cool. So if you're still watching, guys, come on, give me a like, give me a subscribe, send this to somebody who does nervous petting with their dog and see what they think about it. And let's finally see if Addison takes the treats. Spoiler alert. I bought us some fancy treats. Okay. They are, I think they're, what are they, tripe? Okay. 
And let's do an experiment and see if she gets into that. And if she gets into that, you just let her have a big one for smelling. Guys, thanks for watching this video and for tuning in this long. It shouldn't be a big surprise to you. It's a dog that's really scared doesn't want to eat. Only humans like to emotionally eat to change their feelings. Dogs, they're just real creatures and they want help with what's in front of them. They, they're not anywhere outside of what is in, in, in their senses. It's not always easy, I realize, to tune into your dog and to be in that mind state, which is why, excuse my finger, I've made some really great resources for people who are into mindfulness and into dogs. Check out my website. I've got a bunch of meditations. I've got a bunch of toolkits and workbooks, dog language dictionaries, how to master the territory, how to claim the resources, like basically a complete course so that you can become a dog whisperer, become the peaceful alpha and have a really awesome calm dog. So check those out and check, check this channel out next week because we're going to be pumping videos out every week. Thank you.